Hello my dear students, I welcome you all for this exercise 6.2. In total we have finished up to question number question number 3 we have finished. Up to question number 3 we have finished. And 4, 5, 6 are remaining. I will try to finish these 3 questions today. Uh, actually the questions, this topic is new for your people and we have to go slightly slowly for your people to grasp these questions properly that's why otherwise it's okay but i think by today we should be able to finish this exercise exercise 6.2 okay my dear students so coming to question number four question number four what are they asking us see here they have given pq is parallel to st now how are these pq Try to understand this. This ST is somewhere over here. Okay. PQ is somewhere over here. QR comes in this direction. And then we have got. Ah, okay. So this is PQ. This is ST. And this is your R. This is 110 degrees here, this angle PQR. 110 degrees and this is actually 130 degrees. Fine. And PQ is parallel to ST is given. What all things is given to you? PQ is parallel to ST. This is given and these angles are given. Angle PQR. Angle TSR. It's equal to 130 degree. Fine. And what they have given is find angle QRS. Of course, one hint also is given draw a line parallel to ST through point R. So basically, this is what they ask, expect us to draw. This can be labeled as A, B. So construction, construction is something that we draw on our own. Draw A, B. through R through R okay I have to take care here through R we have to take care this okay such that AB is parallel to ST okay my dear students so this is what we have traveled See now what you have to imagine is that, just imagine this also, try to understand this, this also you have to imagine, not needed as such, we have to find this. See now if you understand, now here, as usual, we should be very strong with figures figures are the true friends of a person who wants to really understand geometry. This is your ST, this is a PQ, okay, P, Q, S, T and then of course we also drew this R A B. See so this is what we have to find angle QRS. See my dear students when we have to find angle QRS what all connections do angle QRS have? As I told you we have to extend this also. See it's very cool and clear that if I apply angle ARQ 
प्लस एंगल क्यू आर एस प्लस एंगल एस आर बी वॉट विल बी दैट इज इक्वल टू वन एटी डिग्री आई कैन अप्लाई एंगल्स इन लीनियर पेर ओवर हियर ओके सी वॉट इज हैपनिंग माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स फर्स्ट लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चन कंसेप्ट वाइज आई हैव टू अप्लाई हियर एंगल्स इन लीनियर पेयर but as you know that when you apply angles in linear pair when you are dealing with that any angles any solution as such then only one parameter should be unknown rest all should be known so here if i go you see angle arq plus angle qrs plus angle SRB is equal to 180 degree. I can find if I don't know angle QRS, but what about angle ARQ? I don't even know this, and I don't even know this. So now my question will change. Now I will have to think something that I can find angle ARQ. Okay, so here I have to use angles in linear pair. But before going forward to find angle ARQ, what will I have to do? See angle now this line PQ. is parallel to ab fine here this part of the question now and now i take see these two lines are parallel fine and this is the transversal angle qr is the transversal can i find angle arq yes angle arq is in relation with angle rqp in what way angles Corresponding angles on the same side of transversal. Can you make out this angle ARQ plus angle PQR? Sorry, they are making a C over here, but they will form angles, corresponding angles on the same side of a transversal. So using this, I will be able to find angle ARQ. Similarly, angle this ST is parallel to RB, and this is the transversal. SR is the transversal. That's why I'm telling you always you should know which two lines are parallel. What is the transversal? And because of that, angle TSR plus angle SRB will be equal to 180 degree because they are corresponding angles on the same side of the transversal SR. Then you will be able to find angle SRB. This and then you have for all both. Okay. So can we proceed in the same fashion? So first I will. go for finding so you can tell over here finding angle a oh sir first but before that we have to make one thing see here we have done construction ab is parallel to st pq is parallel to st so here we have to tell first of all pq is parallel to st this is the reason behind this is that it is given and ab is parallel to st again this is by construction you have done this therefore now pq is parallel to st ab is parallel to st therefore three lines are parallel to each other this you better keep it right because then you will require every now and then now you should finding what are you going to calculate first angle arq this you are going to do and for that angle arq for finding angle arq which part of the diagram you are going to use this pq parallel to ar and qr as a transversal pq parallel to ar and qr as a transversal now pq parallel to ab and qr as transversal now you will come to know why we have to write this because now you see there are three pairs of lines which are parallel to each other and there are two two transversals so when you consider pq parallel to ab and qr as a transversal at that time you will see angle pqr plus angle qra is equal to 180 degree the reason for this will be that cross no not corresponding sorry 
इंटीरियर एंगल सॉरी इंटीरियर एंगल्स ऑन सेम साइड ऑफ ट्रांसवर्सल फाइन इस विल कम ओवर हियर नाउ इफ यू सब्सटीट्यूट एंगल पी क्यू आर हंड्रेड एंड टेन डिग्री प्लस एंगल क्यू आर ए इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड एंड एट डिग्री रीजन इज ना हियर यू यू आर डूइंग सब्सटीट्यूशन एंगल क्यू आर ए इज इक्वल टू वन एट डिग्री माइनस minus 110 degree and now you get this as angle 70 degree. so now you can make out that this you have got is as 70 degree okay this is your optimum. you have found angle ARQ and now you will go to find angle SRB angle SR this you will go to find for that ST parallel to AB and SR as a transfer same, same thing same concept interior angles on the same side of a transversal now you will go start what now better write again finding finding angle srb okay now you will tell ST parallel to AB and this time you are taking as SR as transversal so what do we have now angle TSR plus angle SRB will be equal to 180 degree because again the same reason interior angles on same side of transverse fine this is done so now you will find angle SRB you will get over here substitution when you try try to when you start to do substitution over here TSR is 130 degree plus angle have done substitution then you get angle SRB Fine. So you have got angle SRB also. Now you are free to apply angles in linear pair over here. Angle ARQ plus angle QRS plus angle SRB is equal to 180 degree. Reason is angles in linear pair fine so you reached over here angle ar key you have found it is equal to qr and ar are same 70 degrees qrs you don't know this you have to find basically SRB is equal to 50 degrees is equal to 180 degrees again this is substitution fine now 70 degree plus 50 degree will give 120 degree angle but you will be shifting that 120 degree on the other side okay so that will be negative and then you will get angle Q R S is equal 60 degree this is your answer okay 
so now i hope you all are understanding that how various properties that we have used see parallel lines ka properties and then angles in linear pair ka properties we will be using like this all the type of angles the properties that we have learned by now and it is the time that you have to now harvest everything properly of course but there is lots to come yet now coming to question number 5 in question number 5 what they have done is this is ab parallel to cd is given okay this is a this is b this is c this is d parallel to cd is given this is your p now this p comes straight over here meet at q this from here it comes to r fine this is your y this is your x that's all now this is given 50 degree this is given 127 degrees okay fine this is y and this is x okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fine here they have given actually i'm wondering about some other things ab is parallel to cd and they have given angle a b q is equal to 50 degrees angle prd is equal to 127 degrees and you have to find x y fine see my dear students this also is here can you find one thing will come straight there is no reason to think much about that this something like that this is a this is b this is c this is d this is your p this is your q this is your r this is x and this is y this is 50 degree and this is 127 degrees see my dear students x is very easy see here basically if when it comes to x it is so simple a b is parallel to c b is given now a b parallel to c d and you take p q as a transversal then you will come to know angle a p q is congruent to angle p q r this is very simple the reason is that they are forming alternate angles see ab parallel to cd is given if lines are parallel that means now you are free to apply all the properties alternate angles are congruent corresponding angles are congruent and interior angles are supplementary so here you will straight get this as x is equal to 50 degree straight you don't have to bother much about that okay so we will finish that first finding x so this we should always write when there are a series of things happening in the question it is always right that what with what intention you are solving that part of your solution so at present i am solving it to find the value of x so what do i write over here now here ab is parallel to cd and i take pq as transversal is definitely given what i'll get angle a pq now because they are alternate angles alternate interior angles angle a pq will be congruent to angle pq r reason is alternate interior angles fine so we know angle apq is 50 degree therefore angle pqr 50 degree the degree should be written on up slightly problem but it's okay for 50 degree so i have got now this as 50 degree i have to go to y 
See for y again, the same thing will happen, happen what we had done in the previous question. Like here we had applied angles in linear pair, there were three angles, straight line. So here also, but it will be now reverse. We had done over here down, now it will be here, 50 degree plus angle y plus angle this will make it to be angles in linear pair. This you know already, this you want to know and this, can you calculate this? Yes, with the same concept. See this, A, B, A, B, A, B parallel to C, D, this part of the figure, A, B parallel to C, D, P, R, S, transversal, then this angle B, P, R and angle P, R, D are interior angles. P, R, D is known, but this you will be able to calculate. Once you know this, then you can apply angles in linear pair over here and find y. Okay, my dear students, so let's proceed. Okay, now finding angle P, B, P, R. Finding angle B, P, R. B P R okay and this is angle B P R here what we'll do over here again A B is still parallel to C D and this time transversal is P P R as transversal this also is given okay am I in range yes then what you will have? These are now interior angles, so they will be making supplementary equation. Angle B P R plus angle P R D is equal to 180 degree because interior angles on same side. transverse fine this you have got now you will substitute angle bpr is not known so you will write angle bpr prd is known 127 degree is equal to 180 degree you are doing substitution what you get over here angle bpr is equal to 180 degree minus 127 degree angle Three fifty-three degrees. Okay, this will be your answer. Angle BPR you have got. Now you have got angle BPR also that is fifty-three degree. Now you are free to apply angles in linear pair over here. So now you will write angle QPR. Angle APQ and this angle APQ plus angle APQ QPR QPR plus angle RPD is equal to one. Is any same angles in? linear pair this is done so now you can make out this so angle apq you know it is 50 degree this you don't know it is y angle rpp is 53 degrees this you have found then you will write here because that is what you have done if you add this 53 will be 103 degrees that will shift on the other side y is equal to 180 degree minus 103 degrees so that will give me 77 degrees i suppose yes okay therefore x is equal to 50 degree y is equal to 77 degrees this is your solution okay my dear friends this
now is the sixth question very nice question beautiful question i like this question a lot this question sixth question will really teach you some things that we have to really understand very nicely and that's why i was traveling so coolly calmly now if you have understood everything till now then be prepared to learn something better something higher everything is easy my dear students but now is the time that you have to learn something higher here they have told pq and rs are two mirrors placed parallel to each other so this is pq parallel to rs right there yeah. mirrors this is something of this set fine are two mirrors parallel to each other so basically this is parallel pq is parallel to rs this is given to you an incident ray ab strikes the mirror pq at b so this is an incident ray it strikes pq at b this is basically a b now because it is a plane mirror it will reflect from here and it has traveled the reflected ray moves along the path bc this is your path bc and strike the mirror rs at c fine now because this also is a mirror then again from here it will reflect fine and that's all not so much this is your d now they have asked here here what they have given given pq is parallel to rs that's all they have given nothing more than that ab is an incident ray it reflects along bc and then it reflects from bc and it again re reflects along cd now you have to prove ab is parallel to c these two rays are parallel okay my dear students so now what is happening is really something nice fine this is your a b c d p q now you have to learn something really very nice beautiful and new maybe see here what you have to do you have to draw an angle bisector or to draw a normal basically you have to draw normals but this diagram of mine will be wrong because there is a law my dear students what happens you know this diagram of mine will be wrong then still i try to make it as neat as possible see what is the rule in physics when a plane mirror is there normal is basically in physics normal means any line perpendicular is called as normal line is perpendicular so basically this is your incident ray usually we keep it like this this is your mirror and this is our incident ray and then you will have to imagine a perpendicular over here this is supposed to be perpendicular fine this i can label is at it has b n b c so this is what it is perpendicular it is basically a normal in physics it is called as normal why i am suddenly moved to physics 
because this topic is optics optical physics means light anything related to light and mirrors especially light is called as optics you are dealing with dealing with optical physics so you must have gone through uh, spectacles for specs and lenses and everything they basically are optic opticians they are all opticians over there so basically this is optical physics which is coming into picture now and what does optical physics say that if we have a line you consider a point a normal you consider a point normal or you if a ray of light is incident at that point and then you consider a point normal over there this is the incident ray this is the incident ray the angle made by the incident ray is the angle made by the incident ray with the normal this is called as incident angle angle of incidence this is called as angle as this is called as angle of incidence this is the incident ray when it strikes the plane mirror at that point if we consider a normal then definitely after striking it will move it will reflect but it will reflect with the law what does the law say that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection will be equal it will always reflect making an angle equal to the angle of incidence are you getting it will always reflect making an angle equal to the angle of incidence this is the law but then provided that but there are conditions of what that a normal means a perpendicular should be drawn at the point of incidence in that case remember the angle of incidence is what the angle made by the incident ray with the normal that is called as angle of incidence in that case the ray will reflect such that the angle of reflection will be exactly equal to the angle of incidence this is the law of physics so there are two places over here that we have got here this is basically the incident ray which is reflecting now here the angle of incidence is there this is one angle of incidence because two times it is incidence it is incidenting two times so this is one angle of incidence the here when it will reflect what is the angle of incidence over here this angle a b n a b n is the angle of incidence over here when it will reflect from here this is r1 it will reflect in such a way that angle of incidence is equal to angle of r in the rear reflection fine here you will get two angles of optics one is angle of incidence and angle of reflection and they will be equal to each other this is because of the theory of physics now what happens is that this also will be equal this here the angle of incidence will be this i2 and here also it will reflect in such a way that they both are equal okay my dear students you have to understand this very nicely that what is happening this will be equal to this this will be equal to this okay slightly everything is moving first optical physics you have to understand and then slowly steadily you have to move in another direction okay my dear students fine now i'm just wondering how to make you explain things that is the reason i'm taking such a pause from which direction i have to go hmm. so my dear students let us first complete one part of optical physics 
first we will complete one part of optical physics for that first you have to consider that we have to see in the first part you will explain the perpendiculars the normals fine so here you will have construction draw NB NB perpendicular to PQ and MC perpendicular to RS okay so that NB is a normal on PQ at B. Try to understand normal at to normal on PQ. It is perpendicular on PQ at B and MC is a normal on RS. C. Okay, these are perpendicular. These are normal. C MC is normal on RS at C. NB is normal on PQ at B. Why I am telling this? See now, basically what happens? NB is a perpendicular to PQ. MC is a perpendicular to RS. Now. We know PQ is parallel to SR. This is given. And NB is perpendicular to PQ. NB is perpendicular to PQ. Array. NB is perpendicular to PQ. MC is perpendicular to RS. See the condition, how it is. See now usually what happens when actually the lines are parallel and you draw perpendicular on the parallel lines so these perpendiculars also will be parallel to each other are you understanding when you draw when you have parallel lines and you draw perpendicular you draw perpendicular only on this line you draw perpendicular on this line perpendicular drawn on the same line will be parallel also perpendiculars drawn on parallel lines if you drop perpendicular over here, you will drop perpendicular over here, you will drop perpendicular over here, you will drop perpendicular over here. You are drawing perpendicular on parallel lines. So these all lines also will be parallel to each other because perpendiculars drawn on parallel lines are parallel. But since perpendiculars drawn on parallel lines are parallel i hope you are getting perpendiculars these are the perpendiculars nb is a perpendicular and mc is a perpendicular drawn on parallel lines pq and uh, rs therefore nb has to be parallel to mc therefore nb is parallel to mc this is important okay fine now see because nb is parallel to mc nb is a normal nb is parallel to mc now nb parallel to mc try to understand nb parallel to mc and what will be the transversal now we are taking bc as a transversal try to understand bc as a transversal so what will be the z bc as transversal what will be the z angle n b c will be congruent to angle b c m z will be over here because n b is parallel to m c and b c is a transversal therefore the z will be this angle n b c 
will be congruent to angle BCM. Reason will be alternate interior angles. This is important. Are you getting? This is congruent. This NB, this BCM will be congruent. NBC will be congruent to angle BCM because they are alternate interior angles. Now from here I have to move these two are congruent from here I have to move to complete angle this is what you have to learn now with this question that when two angles are congruent and you have to move to a larger angle from a smaller angle this is a smaller angle NBC and BCM are smaller angles from these smaller angles you have to move to this larger angle which larger angle CBA this larger angle try to understand and from this smaller angle BCM I am planning to move to this larger angle BCD but how do I move there now you have to bring it to notice that even this ABN separately is equal to angle NBC because of the law of physics now here So what I will have to do, see now my dear students, this from here I will have to move to here. My intention is this, to move here, from here to here. What I will do, because angle NBC is equal to angle BCM, try to understand, angle NBC is equal to angle BCM and from this smaller angle I have to move to the larger angle, which actually is, actually is double, this larger angle is double the smaller angle. This larger angle, because these both are congruent to each other. By the law of physics, incident angle will be equal to the reflected angle. So, they will be congruent to each other. So that's why this larger angle will be exactly double of this smaller angle. Similarly here, this is the incident angle and this is the reflected angle. They both will be congruent to each other. So, this larger angle BCD will be exactly double of this smaller angle BCM. It will be definitely double of this also. But at present, I have got this. So, what I will do? Two angle NBC is congruent to 2 angle BCM. Multiplying both sides by 2. Are you getting? See, NBC is congruent to BCM I have got. And because these both are congruent, now if I multiply this also by 2 and multiply this also by 2, then they are going to be still congruent to each other. Because I am doing the same activity on both the congruent sides. If I double this and double this, still they will be congruent. If I half this and half this, still they will be congruent. If I multiply this by 4 and multiply this also by 4, still they will be congruent because they are already congruent. Basically they are congruent. So if I add this by 10 and add this by 10, if I do addition on both the sides by the same quantity, add this by 10 and add this by 10 then still they will be congruent but now why I am doing this double because I know that this can be converted to the larger angle by double because this larger angle is a double of the smaller angle the larger angle is a double of the smaller angle this I'll keep ready okay see I'll definitely explain you again everything see here what we have done is that we first drew a perpendicular over here and a perpendicular over here fine and because they are perpendiculars because they are perpendiculars they are also going to be parallel why because perpendiculars drawn on parallel lines perpendiculars drawn on parallel lines are parallel therefore they are going to be parallel and because they are going to be parallel therefore this angle is going to be congruent to this angle by alternate angles theorem fine and then i purposely multiply both the sides by two because now from here i have to move into this larger one so how do I move into the larger one? So what do I do afterwards is that. See, now the law of physics will come into picture now. Since, now, since angle of incidence is equal angle of 
reflection this is by law by law of reflection by law of reflection if you want you can write everything always angle of incident this is the angle of incident this is the incident ray incident ray making angle with the normal is called as answer to angle of incident this is the angle of incidence this will be exactly equal to the angle of reflection this is the reflected ray fine we're making an angle with the normal so these two angles are going to be equal which angle angle a b n angle a b n will be congruent to angle n b c are you getting these two angles will be congruent therefore i will take whole thing angle a b c or angle two angle n b c will be equal to angle a b c are you getting my point these two angles are congruent now i have got that a b n is congruent to angle n b c these two angles are congruent see by relation if you know if this is 2 and this is also 2 this part is 2 this part is 2 the what will be the whole part b it will be double of 2 4 if this part is 20 this part is 20 what this whole part will be the whole part will be 40 double of 20 what happens to a line same will happen to a circle fine if this part this half part is 50 and then definitely this half part also will be 50 the total circle will be 100 similarly when it comes to angle if this one part is 30 this other part is also 30 then this complete angle will be double of 30 60 that is what is happening over here this is angle a b n congruent to angle n b c because these two parts are congruent this whole angle a b c will be double of angle n b c here i don't have see here if supposing this would have been if supposing this would have been if supposing this would have been a this would have been a this complete will be double of a to a and now if this would have been x this would have been x this complete angle bcd this complete angle bcd complete angle bcd would be 2x double of x now instead of writing a a x x i am writing n b c double of angle n b c okay so here i got two angle n b c is equal to angle a b c and then Similarly, I will do everything same sort over here. Similarly, angle BCM will be congruent to angle MCD. Law of reflection. And now what will I take? This, I will take purposely BCM. 2 angle BCM will be equal to full angle BCD. Where have I reached now? 4. This is my point number 4. So now if you see carefully my dear students, in question number, in point number 2 I have got 2 angle NBC and actually in point number 3 I have got 2 angle NBC is equal to angle ABC. Okay. So from 2 3 and 4 what I get 2 angle NBC is equal to 2 angle BCM over here in place of 2 angle NBC I will write angle ABC over here angle ABC congruent to in place of 2 angle BCM 2 angle BCM I will write angle BCD fine in place of this I wrote this congruent is written as it is and in place of this I am writing BC D. okay so now if I look at the picture my picture how it is now angle A B 
C is congruent to angle B C D. Now what is this? A B C B C D is Z is Z for A B and C D B C S transversal. You know? But for segments A B and segment C D B C S transversal if I consider like this then these angles angle A B C and angle B C D are alternate interior angles therefore AB is parallel to when the alternate angles are congruent AB is parallel to CD reason converse means reverse of alternate angles okay my dear student so this is how it is going very interesting questions my question my dear student if you really understand this it will be really nice but try to understand the question how you are traveling in what way we are traveling see i repeat the explanation for your students what you have to do is that see you have to first you know that this is parallel fine these are parallels pq is parallel to rs this is known and this is parallel at b and this is parallel at no this is incident ray at a b and c what you have to do that first we'll have to draw a normal over here normal means a perpendicular over here here a perpendicular and here a perpendicular fine why perpendicular is needed because perpendicular only will make you apply the laws of reflection because law of reflections are angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection but what is angle of incidence angle between the incident ray and the normal and the perpendicular angle made by the incident ray this angle made by the incident ray and the normal this is called as angle of reflection angle by the reflected ray now this is when the ray got incident and this is the reflected ray the angle made by the reflected ray with the normal that will be angle of reflection this we will be needing for that normal will be needed and then you when you make this normal that time itself make it clear that this normal bn has to be parallel to normal cm why because perpendiculars drawn on parallel lines this is the perpendicular drawn on pb pq this is the perpendicular drawn on rs and pq and rs are parallel lines the perpendiculars drawn on parallel lines have to be parallel therefore bn is parallel to cm and then once you say this now we know bn is parallel to cm c one this will be one transversal so you automatically get this angle nbc is congruent to angle bcm see now this is your figure fine this is your figure ah So here will be your one normal, here will be your another normal, fine. Now from here, you will have to travel here, fine. From here, you will need to travel here. For that, what you will do, by angle of reflection, you will show that this angle, for that, but basically here you will get angle NBC is congruent to angle BCM. This you will get by alternate interior angle but here itself multiply this and keep because you have to convert yourself move from here to here that's what you have to learn how to move from smaller angle to the larger angle how to move from a smaller part of the figure to the larger part of the figure that's what you have to learn so how you are going to move from this smaller angle to the larger angle because this is going to be double the larger angle is going to be double of the smaller angle so you purposely keep it double 
Sometimes you will have to convert it to the halves. At that time, you will purposely convert them into half and keep. So this you purposely convert and keep. And then this is what you have got already. Now you will tell this angle is congruent to this angle. Therefore, two angle NBC will be equal to angle ABC. And similarly here you will get this angle is congruent to this angle. This both will be congruent. Angle of reflection is congruent to angle of incidence. Therefore here you will get two angle BCM is equal to angle BCD. So in place of two angle NBC you will write angle ABC is equal to angle in place of two angle BCM you will write angle BC. Here you have reached now suddenly and what is that? This is A, B, C, D. Angle ABC is this and BC is this. See the difference in the figure. Where you have moved. You were over here and you have moved over here now. This is what you have to learn how to move from a smaller angle to the larger angle. Smaller angle to the larger angle and ultimately the figure will expand. And now you have to bring it to notice but angle A for AB and CD, angle ABC and angle BCD form alternate angles and they are congruent, you have shown over here. These are congruent, therefore AB has to be parallel to CD and that's what you have to prove in this question. Prove AB is parallel to CD. Okay, I hope my dear students you have understood this question. This is a very, very, very important question. Not, I will not say that it is important because it will give you marks. It is not, it is important because it may come for the exam. I really don't know whether it will come for the exam. If, if this would have been a normal year, a normal school going year, then definitely this would have been very, very, very important question because I don't know but how many teachers will really like to explain this because of this lockdown and all. But I will still tell you all people that learn this question because this question is teaching you something different. It's teaching you how to move from a smaller part of the figure to the larger part of the figure. Similarly, sometimes you will have to move from larger part of a figure to the smaller part of the figure. If you have understood this, the other questions also will understand, my dear student. That's why I have always told you, ninth is very important because ninth creates that basics that you need for the boards. Okay, my dear student, with this, I stop today's lecture and I think we are finished with exercise 6.2. Soon we will be going to exercise 6.3. Stay home, stay calm. And most important, stay happy. Okay, my dear students, see you all.